Good evening. My name is Daryl Wimberly. I am honored to MC this awesome and important event, Black Health Matters. Tonight, we have the privilege of hearing from some knowledgeable and inspiring speakers. Welcome to Carbondale United's virtual summit, Black Health Matters. We have six panelists tonight. Nancy Maxwell, Yolanda Dean, Stephen Tarver, Dominique Miller, Walter Davis, and Faith Miller. There will be a Q&A session after each speaker. You can submit your questions while a speaker is presenting and you will collect, we, I'm sorry, we will collect them for Q&A. After each Q&A session, there will be a prize giveaway. A name will be drawn from the list of Zoom registrations for each of the six prize giveaways. Winners will be contacted by email after the summit. Let's go over some housekeeping tips. You wanna ask a question? There are two ways to submit your question. If you are viewing this summit in Zoom, use the Q&A function. Submit your question anonymously by checking the send anonymously box. If you're viewing this summit on Facebook, comment on the live stream. If you're having a technical problem, use the raise hand function. Carbondale United's mission statement. The mission of Carbondale United is to provide an avenue of healing and community safety through the following, awareness, education, and activism. Our goals are to eliminate gun violence and racism from our neighborhoods and to provide events that are inclusive and diverse. Check Carbondale United's Facebook page for upcoming events, www.facebook.com, create a better community 15, or on Instagram at Carbondale underscore United 15, or you can email CarbondaleUnited15 at gmail.com. I want to take an opportunity to let you know about an upcoming event by Carbondale United, Black Hair Story. Before there was GPS, there was braiding maps. This will be a Black History Month event and will be interactive with braiding lessons, braiding kits will be provided, natural hair tips, mixed hair care, as well as Q&A sessions. Hair Story will be on February 18th from 6 to 7 p.m. For more information, call 618-549-4807, extension 249. Now, let's meet your first speaker, Nancy Maxwell. Nancy has been both a rape crisis medical slash legal advocate and rape crisis counselor at the Women's Center for almost 10 years. She ran the Women's Empowerment Group at the Irma Hayes Center in Carbondale for many years with few resources. Nancy has been fighting for social justice for over a decade in Southern Illinois. In 2020, Nancy was a recipient of WSIU's Neverly Award and the Centerstones Community Champion Award. She was the first black female officer in Mount Illinois, the criminal justice chair for the Carbondale NAACP branch. And she is the founding member of Carbondale United and Southern Illinois Unity Coalition. Welcome, Nancy Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. Wimberly. And uh, if we can go to the slide. So today I'm going to talk to you about the keto lifestyle. Um, lots of people like to call it the keto diet, but it's not a diet that you can just, it's not a something that you can just start and stop. Uh, you have to keep going with it. It's, it becomes a lifestyle. So this is basically about eating, sleeping, keto. Uh, a few things that we'll go over is what is keto? 
how does it work, the health benefits, yes and no foods, labels and math, intermittent fasting, whoosh, to drink or not to drink, pitfalls and backslides, and success stories and resources. So first of all, what is keto? Next slide, please. Keto or the ketogenic diet is a low carb, high fat diet that can offer many health benefits. A keto diet can be used to help you lose weight and improve your overall health. Uh, how does it work? Well, it can be accomplished by reducing your carbohydrate intake and replacing it with fat. So in other words, you eat a high fat content, content diet and you reduce the number of carbs that you take in. That way your body starts to burn fat instead of the carbohydrates. Um, this reduction puts your body in a new metabolic, metabolic state called ketosis. So um, it's plant-based, it's basically plant-based and animal products. And all grains and sugar and processed food is a no-no. Along with the following um, diet, it's important to get enough sleep, which I have a problem with, but I'm working on, uh, to stay active, manage stress, get outdoors for some sunlight, pl drink plenty of water, uh, take in enough electrolytes, keep a positive attitude, and try not to be discouraged by setbacks. Know your body and try not to compare. Next slide. So these are the health benefits. Uh, when you're on um, the keto lifestyle, you can 57% resolve migraines. You can uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, when I first started this diet, I took two shots a day. Uh, my blood sugar started out if in the four or five hundreds. And this will be fasting before I even took a bite of food. Uh, nowadays, it's down to 194, sometimes even lower. I'm currently in, um, in what you call uh, not, my AC1 is lowered. Um, so I'm kind of currently in remission. Um, it also can reduce depression, sleep apnea, asthma, uh, cardiovascular disease, and a whole lot more. Your quality of life improved, improves in 95% of the patients. Next slide, please. So what can you eat? All the meat you want, but not too much meat. Um, you can eat most fish and seafood. Water, coffee are the two uh, number one drinks. Um, all the eggs, and then there's certain fruits. Usually the fruits that end with uh, berry. So strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, those are the fruits you can eat. Um, the thing that you cannot eat is sweets, snacks, some of the favorite stuff like potatoes and potato chips and macaroni and cheese and um, different uh, meals such as that. However, Keto has millions of recipes. So instead of cooking macaroni and cheese, I cook cauliflower and cheese. Uh, it's not quite exactly the same, but it's uh, a good enough dish to um, substitute for the macaroni and cheese because the results from this diet, or I should say lifestyle, is great. Next slide, please. So carbs basically equal sugar. So some people ask, well, isn't fruit very healthy? Well, as you can see in this chart, if you eat a banana, that's 17 grams of carbs. And the carbs is broken down into glucose and glucose will enter your bloodstream. Same thing with bread and starches. Um, so before, when, before I started this, uh, the doctor was on me about doing something about my health and my diet. 
And I'm thinking, well, I, so I started eating fruit, bananas, apples, and um, I went to wheat bread and I tried to limit um, the things that I thought may be causing my blue cup blood glucose to be so high. But in actuality, sugar is in everything. And if you're not aware of that, then um, you won't realize how much sugar you're intaking. So sugar is in ketchup, it's in salad dressing, it's in a great number of things. Next slide. So this is where labels and math come. I learned how to read labels. So it's something, if I pick up a product and it has nine grams of total carbohydrates and two grams of dietary fiber and three grams of sugar alcohol, I can deduct that. So I'll take the total carbs minus the fiber and the sugar alcohol, and that will leave me with four grams instead of the nine that I started out with. You'll be amazed when you start looking at labels about if you take your eyes off the calories and start looking at the sugar and the carbs, um, the things that say that, oh, we're healthy, low fat. Actually, the fat can help you because your body does better when it burns fat instead of burning carbohydrates. Next slide, please. Um, doing the fasting, and there are six types, is alternate day fasting, up to the ninth hour fasting, nightly fasting, uh, six, 16 slash 18 fasting, one meal per day fasting, and one day per week. When I first started, I was not doing the fasting. I was just, I had changed my um, eating habits. And then I got, my weight got to a kind of a standstill. So I started doing the fasting. So currently now, if I eat at seven o'clock at night, I'm not gonna eat again till seven in the morning. Um, and that makes a big difference. I saw the weight start moving and coming off uh, faster. I was no longer at a standstill. So fasting can be very beneficial. Next slide, please. And then there's the whoosh. So another part of uh, my standstill is that it takes some time. So, you know, if you have a fully loaded fat cell and then some of the fat gone, is gone, and then the cell starts collapsing, waiting for more fat and the more fat and more water and still waiting for some more and um, it's staying open. And then when you get to no fat and lots of water, that's when you go to the scale and be like, OMG, I was like 200 pounds and now I'm like 192. You start seeing the weight slide off. So don't get discouraged if you decide to try keto and the weight doesn't come off at first. This is kind of like the process it goes through uh, to help the weight come off. So wait, stay strong, wait for the whoosh. Next slide, please. Water is your best friend on keto. Water helps uh, the weight come down even faster. So um, when you diet, you lose the stored fat in the cells, which gets refilled with water to maintain the size until the cells shrink and the results finally come. So this is like another way to explain the whoosh. The water will help greatly. Plus you're super thirsty on keto. Next slide, please. To drink or not to drink. So you can still have uh, a drink when you're on keto. Um, the best thing that I found is doing the vodka uh, tequila gin um, to drink and avoiding like the little, I used to like the little drinks. Uh, I forgot what they call, but the little drinks in a six pack uh, they have all the sugar in it. You start looking at all the sugar that comes in some of those drinks. So what I do is get those little Kool-Aid packs and I mix that up and then mix it with my vodka and that's my drink. Uh, and I've reduced the amount of sugar greatly uh, by doing it that way. 
next. And yes, you can eat out. And these are some places, uh, some meals that you can order. Unfortunately, I'm really mad at KFC. They took away the grilled chicken. That was one of my favorite places to go and get some grilled chicken. Um, but at Taco Bell, they had a Power Bowl. Uh, and Wendy's, they had a Baconator. Bacon is high in fat, and so is avocados. So those are two very keto-friendly foods. So um, you take out the bun and you take out the ketchup because if you recall, ketchup has sugar in it. They make sugar-free ketchup, sugar-free syrup, and sugar-free salad dressing and barbecue sauce. Um, you can eat the burrito bowl and Moe's and Burger King. You can have uh, a bacon key without the uh, bun and ketchup. And at Pizza Hut, you can get the eight-piece uh, garlic parmesan bone in wings. And at McDonald's, you can get two round eggs, two sausages, two patties, and two slices of cheese. And at Panera, you can get power steak and lettuce wrap. So you can still eat out. Next slide, please. Bag lunches. This is what I learned. If you go to a party or you go to a... Um, company lunch, most likely they're not going to have the foods uh, that you can eat on the keto diet. So I start carrying my bag with my own food in it. Um, that way, if I go somewhere, I can pull out some food that I can eat and keep going uh, with my diet slash lifestyle. Next slide. So when everyone who judged you when you first started keto, and they did, they laughed, they called me Dorothy, was the dog going to come out of my basket? You know, I don't see how you eat like this. How do you do all this? I think you could just keep, you could just cheat one time and it'll be fat. Those are some of the comments that I heard from people. Um, so I thought this was very um, relatable. When everyone who judged you when you first started keto sees you hit your goal and wants to know how you did it. That's exactly what happened because as the weight went down, people came and asked me, okay, well, I want to know more about this diet. Can you give me some information or how do I do it? You know, you're starting to really look good. Next slide, please. So these are some pictures uh, just that I found on the internet to kind of show you uh, the difference. Uh, with people who have been on uh, the diet. And this last one is me, uh, my before and after in the same exact outfit, but uh, I had to roll the pants up to, to actually put them on. But I just wanted to show the difference between when I started and I didn't realize till I really looked at this picture and I was a little slimmer that I had five chins, but yeah. Um, that's when I started, and um, I took this picture about four or five months later after I started. So pitfalls and backslides. Right now, I'm recovering from a backslide because uh, COVID and other things and sitting at home, um, I did it faithfully for a year and a half, and I can tell you what happens when you don't do it then you, you know, your uh, diabetes comes back. Um, my problem with my eyesight came back. Um, when I did the diet, my hair grew. My eyesight got better. My eyesight got so much better that when I went to go get the glasses, the doctor was like, this is amazing. He called other doctors in there to see. Uh, the same when I went in remission for diabetes. Uh, the doctor was uh, simply amazed. Not only did I go in remission for diabetes, um, my feet used to swell up so much that I had to buy a bigger size shoe. That was no longer a problem. In fact, I had to go down the shoe size. Um, I used to fall out trying to get up the steps because I couldn't breathe. It, it, it could be five steps. And you'd think I ran a marathon trying to get up the steps. So um, there's some, some do's and some don'ts. But the big thing to remember is keto is like a marriage. It, does, it doesn't work if you cheat. So you have to be committed to doing it, but the results are amazing. Next slide. 
So um, here's uh, the credits are some of the articles I got off of there and I'll be willing to send this PowerPoint out to anybody who asked. It came from uh, Fast and Swole and EliteShub.com. Um, my suggestion is I joined a group on Facebook, a keto group, and they were so supportive and there will be so many recipes on there. Like I didn't know I could make a cake in a coffee cup and that will satisfy my sweet tooth or make ice cream in a, ma in a mason jar. Um, so there are lots of recipes out there and there are lots of substitutes for how you eat now um, with how you could eat on keto, but you would get these health results that are absolutely amazing. Um, there is a documentary on um, keto uh, called The Magic Pill. Uh, it's on Netflix, as far as I know. I don't know. Uh, Mr. Wembley, do we have time? It's uh, two minutes. We probably need to move to the question and answer session. Okay. Yes, okay. Please. Well, you can look that up on Netflix. I'm sorry. I, I tried to move fast so we could get to the... Uh, the uh, trailer of the movie. That's so right. do we have any questions? Yeah, uh, Nancy, first off, great job. I appreciate the real talk. And uh, so at this time, we're gonna have Q&A. So Mickey, what questions do we have for Nancy? Okay, uh, it says, how does fasting affect metabolism? And it looks like Diana Bradley uh, wants to answer that question as well as Nancy, I guess. <laughs> Diana could probably answer it if she wants. No, that's for you, Nancy. So sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I had a mentor. So I had somebody who told me about the uh, diet and they just told me to try the fasting. I can't give you the logistics of it. I just know I did it and it worked. So, um, and I'm pretty sure there's plenty of information out there on it. Is, is uh, Diana, do you want to answer that too and add to embellish um, Nancy's answer? No, I think we're good. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Yeah. All I right. Just well, to... let's, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, prize giveaway. Liz? All right. So uh, if you are here with us on Zoom, you registered and are attending on Zoom, you are eligible for the prize giveaway. And uh, like we said earlier, we will have uh, six prizes to give away, one after each speaker. And so I've got a handy dandy dice here with me and I've got our registration list. So we're going to give this a roll and we're going to see who's going to win a prize this time. And it looks like it is Laura Chamness. Laura Chamness, if you want to uh, email Carbondale United at carbondaleunited15 at gmail.com, or you can get in touch with us on Facebook or Instagram, and we will make sure that you can get your prize. Congratulations. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Liz. All right, now let's meet our next speaker, Yolanda Dean. Yolanda was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. She received her bachelor's degree from Southwest Missouri State University and both of her master's degrees from Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. She has been a senior lecturer at SIUC for over 15 years and is part of their Head Start agency. She has been a substitute teacher for Districts 95, 176 and 186. Her contributions to the community include working with Addicts Community Service Program, being a 4-H leader, a big sister, and partnering with the NAACP to provide children programs, such as a trip to Springfield to attend a state conference. Welcome, Yolanda Dean. Hello. Hi. My, my presentation Hi. is titled Choices. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not reading slides to you. I've always hated for people to read slides to me. So let's go. So I wanted to start off by telling you that your food choices are usually dictated by those that you are around. For example, when you're young, a young child, you're typically eating whatever the parent prepares or buys. 
once you get to be school age, then you typically like or dislike what your friends like or dislike. Next, please. Once I decided to get healthy, I made an appointment with a nutritionist. <laughs> it didn't work out for me. No, not that she was telling me anything wrong. She just wanted to eliminate too many foods out of my diet at one time. And the things that she wanted to incorporate was not appealing to me. Next, please. For me, it is better to focus on the, on the positive, which means if I eat more of the foods that I should be eating, then by default, I will be eating less of the foods that I shouldn't be eating simply because my body has no rooms for the, the, those foods. So I subscribe to the theory of Go Foods and Go Foods. Next, please. Go Foods are things that you should be eating daily and Go Foods are foods that you should be eating every once in a while. So the previous slide was a picture of foods of every food group color that you should be eating every day. This slide is a picture of what your plate should look like and I'm gonna tell you right now, my plate does not look like this for every meal or does it look like this every day? But it's all about finding a balance that works for you. Next, please. Next slide. So I'm not talking to you about a diet plan. I'm talking to you about recognizing and making adjustments to your eating habits. And this is how I made adjustments. We can play the video. We have all of our ingredients here to make a nice Sorry about that. I'll make that play again. Healthy smoothie. We have strawberries. We have blueberries. We have blackberries. We have carrots. We have broccoli. We have spinach, bananas, and my fave, orange juice. Now, if you like, you can use milk. I don't do dairy, so I use the milk and the orange juice. So the trick is to find fruits that you like because once you put the fruit in, it'll mask the taste of the vegetables. Since you guys are new to this, I'm gonna go light on the vegetables, but they will be in there. Where my scissors go? sorry. So, got my little kitchen scissors here, and we're gonna put in some broccoli. Not that much, we're not gonna scare you. Stop. <laughs> Ma'am, yes, this is, it's gonna be very tasty. And, that, and usually for me, I will halfway fill that up, but you guys are gonna be lightweight. Um, little kitchen scissors again, so we can get some carrots out of there. And I put the carrots in because Let's face it, you're never going to see me walking around with a Ziploc bag full of carrot sticks talking about this is my snack. But I'll drink a carrot stick. So, we got some carrot sticks in there. Now, we're going to put in a few blueberries because blueberries are good for you. And let's face it, who really wants to eat a blueberry? But I'll drink one. We'll put that in there. I'll eat blueberries. You will eat blueberries? Oh, I dropped a couple. Uh-oh. Oh, I can't wait to see Anna's face. <laughs> Hope the janitors are coming tonight because I made a mess with the blueberries. Now, the spinach. Liz, are we having technical difficulties? I don't hear it. See anything. Liz? And it will change the color of the smoothie. So we're just going to put a little bit. Just a peach. Ha-ha. Liz, are we having now, technical difficulties? I'm going to put in this whole banana. And if you go to your nutritionist, I'm going to tell you what they don't like in the smoothie is the banana. They said this banana has too much sugar. I don't care what they say. And they say there aren't and too many carbohydrates. They have black carbohydrates. But it's a banana. So I'd rather you eat the banana than a bag of chips or a candy bar. And they don't like the orange juice because they say it has too much sugar. But it's better than a can of soda. So you have strawberry. Oh, super sookie. Gotta put the strawberries. And the blackberries. And the raspberries. Yeah, we're not gonna do those just yet. I didn't make a pit Only because I don't want you guys to be eating your smoothie this morning. So we're gonna put in some strawberries there. Just get the tops oh, off. Yeah. And I picked some nice, thick, luscious strawberries this morning. They brought extra chairs for you guys. All right. Got the strawberries in there. 
And we'll put a lot of those in there because that's going to make it sweet. And all you're going to taste is the strawberries and the bananas and maybe some orange juice. You won't taste the vegetables at all. We'll put some of those in a little bit later only because, unless you guys want, if you're willing, I'll put some in there. But sometimes you have to chew those. They don't blend very well. Um, I'm Can used to it. Seeds out of them. Out of them. No, because right, it's in that's there. That's impossible. Right. So that's why you're chewing it a little bit. But if you look at this, how many <laughs> colors have you already eaten? You got your red. You got your orange. You got your green. Your white. And this is just breakfast. All right, we're gonna turn it on. I like to put it on three and be like, switch it up. Sitting down, and I'm like, Look, I'm tired now. I'm tired. You have worked the nerves. All right, yeah, I'm bringing my all right guys. Uh, we're gonna, time, I'll be ready for them after Yolanda. We're gonna move yeah. on. Thank you for that. That's awesome. You're welcome. That available uh, after the uh, program. So, then this, these slides is I'm sharing with you a copy of my lab results, and it's just to show you that um, it's beneficial for your body to have a balance when it comes to nutrition. My doctors now, their only suggestion for me is to lose about 20 pounds. Every time I go for a visit, that's what they say. And I always respond with, I'm working on it. The next couple of slides are just to show you that I haven't eliminated these foods from my diet. I have, however, you could go, yeah, just keep going. I have, however, decreased the amount of times that I eat them and how much of them I eat. Because again, my body just doesn't have room for them. I did. Yeah, I know it's a lot of those food slides, but I like those foods. We could go to the next one. Water is important. When I first started this, my nutritionist told me that I was drinking about two thirds of my calories every day with the amounts of soda, juices, and Kool-Aid. This for me was an easy fix for me because again, I didn't eliminate those drinks. I just increased my water intake. My coworkers and I would have water challenges. And when they got tired of them, I would have water challenges with my friends on Facebook. Um, now it's just a habit for me to drink 45 ounces of water every day. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you have to drink your daily water intake. Many fruits are loaded with water. Again, salads are one of the foods that you should be eating every day. But just like the video showed, if you can't eat it, put it in a smoothie and drink it. Go to the next slide, please. Last but not least, some of my friends were like, no, Yolanda, I don't care what you say. I'm not looking, I don't care, but you need to know what is coming out of you so that you know what changes you need to make um, within your diet. And again, you know, if you needed to make drastic changes in your life, your medical personnel is the person to talk to for that. This is my presentation is for people that are just looking to learn how to do better so that they can be better. That is all. All right. Thank you, Yolanda. All right. It's time for questions. Uh, so, uh, Mickey, what questions do we have for Yolanda? It was straightforward. See, they have no questions. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, let's go ahead, Liz, and let's give away another prize. Absolutely. Let's get to it. So I'm going to roll my dice here again, and we will see who will be winning excuse the second Liz. prize. Liz, excuse me. There is one question from Lakeisha. My, my mic was muted. There, uh, yes, we do have a question. I, I see that now. I would love okay. uh, Yolanda to it's, answer that. Wait a minute. So the question is, what are some key words to having a positive mindset? to making healthier food choices? Key words is just eat more of the things you should be eating. Um, focus on what you should be doing and that way you'll just decrease what you shouldn't be doing. So if I'm drinking my smoothies in the morning, I don't want a donut for breakfast. I just, I just don't want it. So that, that works better for me. The water challenges work great. I don't even remember the last time I had a cup of Kool-Aid. Uh, so that, it just works for me to, to focus on what I should be doing. 
Okay. That's great, Yolanda. Thank you so much. And uh, I really appreciate both you and Nancy reminding me to drink enough water. So on that note, we're going to move on to our second prize giveaway. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us. And I rolled that off my desk. Uh, the second prize will be going to Laverne Klein. Laverne Klein, thank you so much uh, for being with us. And you will get a prize. So if you want to get in touch with Carbondale United, and we'll make sure that that gets to you. Thank you so much. And we'll move on to our next presenter. All right, uh, let's meet your next speaker, Stephen Tarver Sr. Stephen is the founder and president of Men of Power and Women of Strength Incorporated, located in Cairo, Illinois. Established in April of 2017, this 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, desired to create instructive, enlightening, and empowerment programs or activities for families to reverse moral, social, economic, and mental deterioration within Cairo and surrounding communities. Focusing on mobilizing and utilizing all available resources, Men of Power, Women of Strength Incorporated has been able to nurture, feed, and provide education, guidance, and personal development within the tri-state area. Serving his community for over six years, Mr. Tarver assists on many advisory committees, acti actively mentors and sponsors youth, and is very hands-on in political and social issues. Welcome, Stephen Tarver Sr. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I, there we go. I wanted to talk about oh. Black Black health matters and, and it matters because we talked about physical, but mental is also important. 60% of African-American people have reported having a mental illness and that ment mental illness has rose between African-Americans between 2008 and 2018. But in 2018, 50% of ages 18 to 25 and 50% of adults uh, did not get any treatment for this mental illness. What does that mean? That means what happens is everyone in, insane in the membrane right now? Especially after this COVID and how we've been isolated and locked down into our own little homes. So I started thinking about this and everything comes back to life. That's right, life. Life has so many ups and downs because sometimes we find out that our money gets tight and we can't actually do the things we wanna do. We gotta hold on a little tighter because we can't actually do something. Um, we also notice that when money gets tight, it seems like everything gets to go bad. The car breaks down, the refrigerator needs to be replaced. And then with all this stress that takes place in your life, you become distance with your mate, start having problems in your relationships. Life, huh? the saga continues. But I found myself in this bubble. I want to tell you guys, I actually was diagnosed with PTSD and, and I tried to work it out by finding love in all the wrong places and it didn't work out. So then I found myself going to tobacco, drugs and alcohol and that didn't work out. So I want to tell you guys tonight what really helps with your mental health issues. Bubble-lation. That's right, you folks. I said bubble-lation. I know you said, what is he talking about? Bubble-lation. I want to get this in your mind. Bubble-lation. What does bubble-lation consist of? Bubble-lation consists of a bathtub and some hot water. You also would like to have Dr. Teal's foaming bath. Now, Dr. Teal comes in many varieties, but I like the lavender. You want some Epsom salt, green alcohol if you work out because your muscles might get a little sore. You also would need some Mr. Bubbles. I use Mr. Bubble because he's old, he's original. He gives me a lot of more bubbles. I get to go in the water and the bubbles be all over the place. And you must have your favorite playlist. Music is vital to bubbleation. Now, what does that do for me? Man, look at this picture. Can you imagine how I feel? I'm singing my songs. I'm happy as could be. I'm laughing. All the things that bother me become funny because I prayed and asked God to help me as I go underwater and all that stuff that was in my mind is over. Bubbleation. Bubbleation to me is this. Life is the most complicated task for all of God's creation. However, it could be bearable if you just tried some bubbleation. 
I turn it back over to Health Matters Summit. Stephen, thank you, sir. Appreciate that, man. Uh, it is time for questions. Uh, so Mickey, do you have any questions for Stephen? Steve, how did you come up with bubblations? Well, I, I find myself working out a lot. So I noticed that the, the hot water therapy is truly good for sore muscles. But as time got, goes on and I became older in my life and I got more experiences, I noticed that the early mornings is the best time to get into some nice cool water. Uh, those bubbles is just refreshing. And then and just letting your mind go. No worries, it's quiet, the water's running, you got your favorite list going. I even put lights around my uh, my mirror in the bathroom so I could get a nice little mode. It's, a, it's just an escape from everything that you're gonna face throughout the day. It gives me inspiration to get up and get going. Sometimes I do it twice a day, just to make sure that I'm feeling up to par about the face what's, what's going on in the daytime. Oh. Um. Steve, did you hear my question about becoming a comedian? Because you made me laugh. And laughter is a good, good source of um, fighting mental illness. I tell you this. I have tried my hand at comedian uh, of, of comedy a couple of times. And I'm not finished because we're actually starting a business here in Cairo, which I'll be uh, hosting comedy on the couch once a week. So laughter is important in life. If you can't laugh, man, you're going to cry more than you yeah. want to. Thank you. Okay, uh, Liz, let's have another prize giveaway. Absolutely, let's get to it. All right, so this will be our third prize giveaway out of, out of the six we'll have today, and I'm going to roll my dice here. And we are looking at Kimberly Glenn. Kimberly Glenn, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us on Zoom, and get in touch with Carbondale United, and we'll make sure that you get your prize. Thank you so much. All right, let's meet our next speaker. Dominique Miller. Uh, Dominique is a Chicago native and alum of South Shore High School. She is a certified nurse's assistant, medical assistant, pharmacy tech, and phlebotomy lab tech. She received her bachelor's degree in science in healthcare administration from Mid-American Christian University and currently works for the Veterans Administration. While living in Southern Illinois, Dominique has had the honor and privilege to make an impact on those around her uh, in service in multiple community organizations, including the National Black Caucus Foundation and the NAACP. She has a heart for youth and is starting a new scholarship foundation, the Ambassadors of the Future. Welcome, Dominique Miller. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you first to Miss Nancy and the group uh, for putting on this great event tonight. Um, I think everybody has done well thus far and will continue to do well tonight. I am going to talk to you guys about an amazing opportunity um, that I get to be a part of daily. Um, it's called Total Life Changes. We are in the health and wellness industry. And even before the uh, pandemic, we were around, we've been around since 1990. Our founder and CEO is Mr. Jack Fallon. And one thing that drives me is a company's uh, core values. And so I'm not going to read you off of the slide, but here are a few of our core values. We are always hungry for more. Passion is our fuel. Having fun, we get more work done. We love each other, period. Grateful is our mindset. Our standard is giving more than what's expected. We don't just do what's easy, we do what's right. And so what we do here in Total Life Changes is we share information with people about how to enhance their health. It's not always about losing weight, but many people don't realize how many people struggle with being able to gain weight. If you could go to the next slide for me, please. Nutriverse. So. Nutriverse is our daily multi-liquid vitamin. It's safe enough for the whole family. If you have a child as young as two years old, all the way up to somebody that's 100, they can take Nutriverse daily. Why do you need a multi-liquid vitamin? 
even before the pandemic, guys, we needed to be providing our body with the proper nutrients that it needs. When you take this product, it is the equivalent of eating 10 healthy salads in one day. All you do is take one uh, teaspoon of it. And the thing that I love about it is, is that it already has vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, uh, your folic acid, B12, uh, biotin, calcium, magnesium, potassium. So everything that you're going to go to the store and buy individually, you get that all in this one bottle. And again, it's safe enough for the whole entire family to take as well. Next slide. Then we also have our detox tea. I know a lot of people are um, detoxing their bodies right now, but the thing that I love about our detox tea is that it's made up of nine herbs, nine herbs. Many people don't even understand why they need to detox. Some people feel like, oh, I work out or, you know, I eat pretty healthy. But the thing that you don't understand is that your gut is your second brain. So if you do not get rid of those toxins, it's going to come out in other ways. I know many people um, laugh at people that struggle with uh, breath odor. And that's partially because your intestines has not had an opportunity to do what it was created to do. I know in the African-American culture, now I don't eat them, but I don't judge people that do. They eat, you know, you got people like to eat chitlins and pig feet and things like that. So just think about all the years or all the many Sundays from eating chitlins and your body never really flushes that stuff out. It takes about um, six to nine months for a state to properly break down unless you're just going to continuously wash it down with Coke. But if you ever take a Coke can and put it on top of a battery, if it's got corrosion on it, just think about that. Is that really something we should put in our bodies? Now, I know some people say they can't go without their Coke. They can't go without um, their Pepsi. But detoxing helps you to safely get rid of those cravings. Parasites are real. We have many testimonials of people that have had parasites to come out of them. So when Yolanda was talking about um, actually looking at what comes out of you, that is important. That is very, very key because the way that your body speaks to you is letting you know what comes out. Many people suffer from acne and you wonder why you can't clear up your face or this or that. When the colon can't do what it needs to do, it creates other issues in other parts of your body. So it comes out through your pores. It comes out through your liver and things like that. And even if you are um, diabetic or whatever, you can still um, drink this tea. Like I said, this again is safe enough for the whole family. We do have it in the brew form where you put it on the stove and brew it. And we also have it in our instant. Now, because I'm a on the go all the time type of, type of person, just grab you a bottle of water, pour it in here, shake it up and go. It is not the type of detox where it's going to have you bent over. Some um, people have experienced uh, bad things because I work in the healthcare industry in nursing. Um, I've had people ask me to fill out FMLA papers for them detoxing. With this detox, it is a gentle detox, just as it says uh, on the packaging. If you could go to the next slide for me, please. And then this product here is something that I love, love, love. Um, I know many people work long days. People are tired. You just never feel like you can catch up on your sleep. This energy, this NRG, natural raw energy, if you say it fast, it sounds like we're saying energy, but it is another all natural product. It doesn't give you the shake, rattles, and rolls, doesn't cause you to have the jitters. It won't cause you to feel like you're coming down off of a high, but I take this, I start my days pretty early and I take one capsule a day. It allows me to burn up to 300 calories just from taking that one capsule. Now inside of here is 5-HTP. Now, because I work in behavioral health, I know that a lot of the medications that we prescribe in um, behavioral health have 5-HTP in it. And why is that important? Because that's what helps to balance people's moods out. You know, some people suffer from depression uh, of the winter months, people don't like the uh, winter time or, you know, the fact that the sun goes down earlier. And so having 5-HTP in here, it not only helps you with your moods, but it also helps you with your mental clarity and mental uh, focus 
um, as well. Next slide, please. And so we do, um, I do offer samples. So if you are somebody that's interested in the products or you've been seeing the products, but you're like, hey, I really don't know anybody um, that's had, you know, tried these products, you can reach out to me and I am more than happy to send you samples for free. And these are all of the free samples that we do offer. Now, I do need to say this um, for the raspberry lemonade tea. Um, it does, it has 0.0% THC in it, but it does have hemp extract in it. So I wouldn't necessarily give this to my child or a minor. It's not going to make you feel high or anything like that. But if you're somebody that suffers from not being able to sleep at night, um, this product here is really good. I drank it um, in the evening. And you can drink it hot or cold with your bubblations uh, from Steve. Next slide. And so this is the conclusion of my presentation. And so this is how, if you want samples or if you have other questions, um, you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Wumberly. All right. Dominique, thank you very much. Great presentation. Uh, let's uh, see what questions we have. Mickey, what questions do we have for Dominique? Well, one is, uh, she mentioned about giving out free samples, but someone asked, where can you purchase the product? Um, you can actually go to my website. I'll post it uh, in the chat and then you can post it over there. Um, I think I posted it on the last slide as well, but I'm going to post it in here. Um, okay. But you can go on there. We do have a 30 day money back guarantee um, on the products. And if you need to take the product, the information to your doctor's office, because we do not claim the cure, heal or mitigate any diseases. Um, you can um, show them the information and also there's testimonials on the website as well. So um, if you want to read other people's testimonials, they are on there. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Liz, let's have another prize giveaway. Absolutely. Let's get to it. So this will be our fourth out of six prize giveaway for the evening. And again, thank you so much for joining us here at Carbondale United for this summit. And I'm going to roll my magic dice here again. And we are looking at, and I'm very, very sorry if I uh, mispronounce your name, uh, Kanishia Porter. Kanishia Porter, uh, get in touch with us and we'll make sure that you get your prize. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. All right. Uh, let's meet your next speaker. Walter A. Der Walter A. Davis III. Walter is an exciting motivational speaker who inspires people everywhere about being healthy and fit, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, socially, and physically. Began his motivational speaking in 1992 with the release of his gospel rap album, God's Kingdom is Coming. He received his MS in education from SIUC in 2008 and is currently pursuing his doctoral degree in education administration and higher education. Walter is the CEO of Motivated to Win, a holistic, healthy lifestyle and fit business. After reversing his type two diabetes, he now trains and coaches others on reaching their goals and overcoming their health struggles. Welcome, Walter A. Davis III. All right, all right. Time to get motivated. Uh, just want to thank, man, everybody uh, for participating. Want to thank uh, Nancy. First of all, I want to thank God for allowing me to wake up this morning. Uh, my Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, I got to thank them first with all this, you know, death going on with this pandemic. And then uh, I want to thank Nancy uh, Maxwell um, and all her team, uh, Carbondale United, Carbondale Public Library, all the sponsors. Uh, uh, our MC, uh, Mr. Wembley, it's always good to see you. Uh, all the presenters and uh, all of our guests uh, on this evening. Um, this is a great topic, Black uh, Health Matters, uh, especially in a global pandemic uh, that we're in right now and with this coronavirus, uh, because it's attacking a lot of Black people, as we know, uh, we're the highest ones that this virus is, is hitting. Uh, black people are high risk. Uh, of all the symptoms uh, the virus is attacking, uh, high blood pressure, 
uh, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, uh, lung disease. Um, but that that's a whole nother topic, um, which leads me to my story and why I decided to take my health very serious. I'm going to talk about three areas um, as it goes along with uh, my PowerPoint, because I, I know I'm not going to get through everything uh, in my PowerPoint. So the three areas I'm going to talk about is the past, the present, and the future. Uh, the past is when I uh, got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes almost five years ago, and uh, it rocked me. It rocked me to my world. Uh, my vision got blurred, and when I was teaching my freshman seminar class, um, I couldn't even see my students in the back of the classroom. Um, I was squinting all the time. I couldn't see hardly anything. Um, I thought I was just getting older and needed glasses. I was going to Walmart trying prescription glasses, um, but that wasn't working. Um, but as things started digressing, I knew that there was something wrong uh, with my health. I went to the doctor and that's when he told me I had type two diabetes and my blood sugar was at 590 and I almost died. Uh, he told me that I, I almost went into a diabetic coma and uh, passed away. Uh, um, so I started to basically then uh, make changes in my life. Uh, they say, if you wanna hide something from black people, uh, give it to a doctor um, because uh, black people ain't going to the doctor. Um, and so I had to overcome my fear of going to the doctor because a lot of times uh, in the black community in the black culture, we're afraid to go to the doctor because we don't want bad news. And that's exactly what I got uh, was bad news uh, with type two uh, diabetes, my high blood pressure and different things like that. Um, so I had to overcome my fear. My doctor basically told me that I either change what I'm doing or uh, my life expectancy um, was, gonna, was gonna die. And so I began to change. Um, write down this or, or, or take this to heart, uh, what I'm saying. Information with no application ain't gonna change your situation. You have heard a lot of presenters today that's given positive information, that's given a lot of information. But if you don't apply the information that we're giving you, uh, don't expect your situation to change. If, if you overweight or if you're dealing with mental issues, uh, if you're dealing with uh, any different things in your life and you're getting information and you're not applying that information, don't get mad at the presenters or the people that's giving you the information. Get mad at yourself um, because information plus application will uh, change your situation. And that's what exactly what happened uh, in my life. So I started my weight loss journey uh, in May of 2016. I was about 290 pounds. I was overweight. Um, uh, if I took five steps, I was breathing hard uh, with my hands on my knees. Um, but I said in 2016, no more excuses. I said, I'm done with excuses. It's time to get to work. Uh, I have to be motivated to win 365 days. So I started using my exercise as therapy. Um, it helps me mentally. It helps me emotionally. Um, it helps me spiritually, socially and physically. A lot of my friends that I used to hang around with, uh, we are all overweight. All we talked about was Burger King and eating pizzas and steaks, but we were never talking about exercise. And so now um, my social life is around guys and, and ladies who are motivated to exercise and being healthy. Um, the Pagliacci story, I wanna share this story with you real quick. Um, it's about a, a, um, a man that came uh, to the doctor uh, for some advice and for some help. And he said, I'm struggling, doc. I don't know what to do. And the doctor said, what's going on? And he started telling the doctor all of the different things that was bothering him. And so the doctor said, uh, you know, I, I, I've checked you out. You, you're in a good bill of health. And so I want you to go see this uh, guy named Pegliacci. He's a clown. Uh, he makes people laugh. He, 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 he talks to them, he encourages them, and every time they come back, they thank me for sending uh, me, them to see Pegliacci. And he said, so I want you to go see Pegliacci and I want you to come back and tell me uh, what he said. And the man looked at the doctor and he said, I am Pegliacci. Who do you send me to? 
And so a lot of times in our lives, uh, when it comes to motivation, you know, we're encouraging different people and helping di different people. But at the end of the day, who helps us? Who do we go to for motivation? Who do we go to to talk to about the different things and the struggles that's going on in our life? And so um, I just wanted to share that story because a lot of times we don't talk to people to release things that's bothering us and then we just hold it in and then all of a sudden we don't know why we blow up. And so that brings me to my second area is the present. Um, and, it, and it talks about the zone. And if we could go to the PowerPoint in the PowerPoint talking about the zone um, and look at the acronym and how I broke down uh, zone. Go back, I think one more. It breaks down the whole the whole acronym. But in the zone, it talks about um, the zone talks about starting from zero, starting at the very beginning. And this is when you are starting your mountain climb uh, to do what need what you need to do. And so um, as I was riding, uh, as I was walking on a treadmill one, one morning, I heard something say that you're in a zone. And if you ever seen an athlete in a zone, they block out everything. And I had locked in, I was focused on my exercise. I was about a year in and I had lost um, about 70 pounds. I went back to my doctor. He took me off all my medication. He basically said that you reverse your type two diabetes. My A1C count was at 4.7, it was back to normal. My, my blood pressure was back to normal. And so he said, just keep doing what you was doing. He said, you, you locked in. So in the zone means that you have to start in the beginning. You have to start. Uh, the Owen zone basically means uh, obey your hunger. You got to keep pushing. What are you hungry for? What is your purpose? What is your why? Uh, uh, why do you want to lose weight? Why, why is it important for you to lose the weight? Because it's healthy. So you got to obey your hunger. Um, the end in zone means no excuses. You know, you have to eliminate all distractions and focus on your goals when you are trying to do what you need to do. Um, and that's a lot of times what happened to me when I was trying to lose weight. Um, I would get distracted all the time. And so then I just basically say, you know what? No more excuses. It's time to focus on this uh, weight loss and losing the weight. And so uh, the E means it, 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 it is... Um, empty evaluate and expand that means you have to empty yourself you have to evaluate what you are doing wrong and what you are doing good and then expand yourself like a rubber band which means you have to come out of your comfort zone you can't stay in your comfort zone uh when you're trying to lose weight and get healthy um because uh if you stay in your comfort zone nine times out of ten you're gonna continue to weigh the same weight that you're weighing or uh you're not gonna lose any weight so um in, in, in the PowerPoint, it talks about um, neurosis and hypnosis. And it talks about how athletes tap into this zone. And those that are neurosis means that they allow distractions to basically these athletes allow the yelling, the referee, the other players to get in their head. And so they started missing shots and they couldn't get in the zone. Hypnosis means in this study uh, uh, by, by Jeannie Davis, it means that that you are like uh, uh, that, like you are like somebody has hypnotized you, like you are in a zone. You're not worrying about what the referee is saying. You're not worried about your opponent. You're not worried about what the crowd is saying. You're just focused on your number one goal. As Nancy talked about earlier, the hardest thing for me when I was in my weight loss journey and as I began to lose weight, and as you can see the picture behind me, that's me in the gym. I started to lose friends. <laughs> People uh, started to stop talking to me. Uh, they, they started ignoring me because they started seeing the results. And that was really hurtful because I thought people would encourage me and be happy about, man, you losing weight. But instead, it was the crab barrel mentality and the jealous mentality about you pushing to reach your goals. So lock into your hypnosis, block out everything, put a goal down and stick to that goal and keep pushing. You have to improvise adapt and overcome. And I'm gonna share another story with you real quick. It's about a little boy who came downstairs and he wanted his daddy to take him outside to play. And his daddy said, no, I'm reading the newspaper, son, I'll take you in a minute. 
And the little boy said, no, come on, daddy, I'm ready. He said, wait a minute, son, I'm going to take you in a minute. So as the, as the dad in his newspaper, uh, there was a world uh, in the newspaper. So he ripped it up in a lot of pieces, gave it to his little son that was about five years old. He said, son, if you put these uh, little pieces of puzzle together, he said, you know what, we'll go outside. And so the little boy sat there for a couple of minutes and he put the puzzle piece together and he said, dad, the puzzle piece was done. Can we go outside? His dad was like, how you doing so fast? Like, man, that should have took you a good 30 minutes. He said, no, nah, dad. He said, on your side uh, was the world. He said, but on my side, when you gave me the pieces was a man. He said, so what I did was I put the man together. And when I put the man together, you know what, dad? the world fell into place. And see, a lot of times in life, what happens is we try to fit into the world instead of instead of fixing ourselves and making the world fit to us. And so a lot of times you can't worry about what other people doing, what they doing. You got to worry about what you doing. Don't be, I, I, you know, I used to get mad at people when, when they go to church, they get mad at the preacher. And I'm talking about, what are you doing? Why are you mad at the preacher? But what are you doing? And so the little boy said, if you fix yourself, your world will get fixed. And so a lot of times that's what we have to do when we lock into the zone. My last point is looking into the future. My goal is to be as healthy as I can. I wanna lose 40 more pounds. I wanna be between 180 and 175. I wanna get a six pack app and I wanna finish my book that I'm writing. You can see now that your vision has to be bigger than your present. You see me, I was at my son's graduation. That was a, a suit, a, a tux that I got for my um, for my wedding. And then that was me at a basketball game. I was about 290. Man, I probably would have been going to about 300. But I can, you can see now I'm probably, uh, uh, when I last weighed myself, I'm at 210. I'm feeling good. I'm hitting the gym every day. I'm excited. And I want people to get excited because your vision has to be bigger than your present. You can't look at your situation right now, but you have to look at, where you want to go. You see them size pants. Uh, it, it, my, they was a uh, 46 by 30. That's how big my pants was. 46 by 30. But now I'm in a 36. I'm feeling good. All them pants you see on my bed, I had to give away. So your vision has to be bigger than your present. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to leave you with this. Another little story. There was a, a grandfather and his grandson. They took a vacation. And on the vacation, a storm arose. And as they was going through the storm, the rain started coming down real hard. And the grandson wanted to pull over because people started pulling over because of the rain. And the granddaddy said, no, son, just keep going. Slow down a little bit, but don't stop. And so the grandson, he slowed down. He didn't stop. Rain coming down harder, harder. And he slowed down. He said, Grandpa, I might have to uh, pull over. He said, no, do not pull over. If you got to slow down all the way, slow down, but do not stop. And as they continued to go, the rain started to let up. As they continued to drive, the sun started coming out. And all of a sudden, the grandpa said, son, pull over. The grandson was like, for what? He said, pull over like I told you to. He pulled over. He said, I want you to take a look at all of them people back there. What are they doing? They stopped in the storm. He said, where are we at? We out of the storm. So I encourage you today to keep pushing. I encourage you today, don't stop. Just because you in a storm, keep driving. Just because you in a storm, if you got to slow down a little bit, slow down. But don't stop. Keep going. Because guess what? Your sunshine is coming. Any questions? Thank y'all. Uh, yeah, there is one question. Uh, do you have a gym where you consult with people and train them? Uh, I go to Planet Fitness, um, and so I, I tell people it's a gym membership, $10. Um, if you want to come to the gym when I go, I usually go around 4.30 or 5.00 uh, on, the, on the weekends. I usually try to get there in the morning, and so um, it's $10 a month. Um, if, if, if getting your health in order and $10 a month, you can't pay $10 a month, you probably ain't gonna lose no weight because $10 a month really ain't nothing. So I encourage people, I go to the gym 
You can uh, uh, look at me on the book. Uh, you got my information. If you want to come in the gym when I come in there and we do some workouts, I can show you a routine. But I like to coach people. I like to train them and show them the different ins and outs. And then I let them do what they need to do and not just hover over them and just train them forever. Okay. Thank you. Are there any more questions? I don't see any more questions at this time, but I think at the end, after our uh, final presenter, uh, who will be up next, uh, we will be opening the floor to all the panelists so that they have a chance to answer some questions that were received via Zoom registration. So make sure to stick with us for that, and uh, we can address those questions and any other additional questions that come in through the Q&A. Thank you so much. Mr. Wembley knew when I was big. <laughs> hey, I was going to say, Walt, I was going to say, you know, man, you're going to the basketball games and I remember just watching your son play and uh, I, I can relate to what you're talking about. Uh, so I'm proud of you and thank you for not just giving information, but giving a testimony. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's have another giveaway, please. Absolutely. And uh, thank you so much, Walter. Thank you, Mr. Davis. That was a great presentation. Um, very very inspiring and it reminds me that I need to go out and get a walk every once in a while that is for sure. So let's you get are. on to our <laughs> let's get on to our uh, fifth out of six prize giveaways. So I'm going to roll my dice here again. Hopefully it won't roll off of my desk. And we are looking at Carolyn Harvey. Carolyn Harvey, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us on Zoom and get in touch with Carbondale United and we will get you your prize. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Liz. Now let's meet our final speaker, uh, Faith Miller. Uh, Faith Miller is a registered dental hygienist with 32 years of experience. She has been with SIUC's dental hygiene program since 1999 as a faculty and currently serves as a director of that program. Faith's talk today is entitled, The Mouth is Connected to the Body and provides an overview of how our overview health, overall health, is affected by the condition of our teeth. Welcome, Faith Miller. Hello, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Give me a thumbs up, fantastic. All right, okay, I'm between you and dinner and you all have me following Walter Davis. Uh, thanks, thanks, cuz, for that, appreciate it. <laughs> And I am not related to Dominique Miller. You share the same uh, surname, but we are not related. But I am going to talk to you about how the mouth is connected to the body. Most people don't realize that the mouth is attached. That's the gateway to our nutrition. That's the gateway to our overall health. One of the things that the Surgeon General, David Satcher, years ago, Dentistry is indebted to him because he actually coined this term and made dentistry at the forefront of overall health. So what I'm going to do is just provide a brief overview of how that connects. The Go ahead and to the next slide. Okay, first of all, our students learn how to do patient assessment. They look at the, the person as a whole versus just going straight to the mouth and let's just start cleaning teeth. They first have to take the medical history, take the dental history. From that dental history, you get an idea of where their mindset is as it relates to their overall oral health. Most patients show up if there is a, a problem. They don't do any preventive maintenance. I mean, you wouldn't do that to your car I mean, if when you're the, the moment your car is due and you get the notice that says, okay, it's time for an oil change, then you're right in there with the oil change. We don't do that. Dominique, I think, mentioned it earlier about going to the doctor. Uh, Walter touched on uh, going to the doctor or, or not going to the doctor unless there's absolutely something wrong. But by the time you get to these places, it's the situation is already so far gone that you may or may not be able to, to, to treat things properly. So in dentistry, we, 
we look at plaque or biofilm as kind of the culprit or the primary issue for any dental disease. And I'll talk about dental diseases a little bit later, but those are the dental diseases that we deal with as dental hygienists that are primarily caused by plaque or biofilm. So plaque is that, is that soft stuff that accumulates on your teeth. Sometimes it can be easily removed and sometimes it can't. And that's when you need to go and have uh, a teeth cleaning. So we're forever trying to control plaque or manage plaque or get rid of it. The point is it's really not going to go away simply by rinsing your mouth out. Some people just think, oh, let me just get this, hit this little Listerine real quick. Let me, let me you know, suck on a breath mint, what have you, and that'll get rid of the breath odor. Uh, no, there are other things that go into uh, the breath odor that was uh, touched upon uh, by Dominique. I want to highlight that there are certain things that plaque can associate with that, that contributes to malodor or bad breath versus malodor, which is dog breed, but we won't go there. But there are this putrescine, cadaverine. Uh, putrescine smells like fish. Uh, cadaverine, well, think of cadaver and, 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 and death. Um, sulfur, rotten eggs, those are all combining with the plaque and biofilm in your mouth. And that's where you, you start to get malodor or bad breath, you know, where your breath smells like, uh, you know, fish. There's even keto breath um, that has to do with how many ketones that you're producing. And, you know, Walter touched on uh, diabetes and uh, ketoacidosis. So those are, are things that are connected there. So uh, go on to the next slide. Before we um, get into, we'll discuss uh, the, the role in plaque and how it connects uh, a little bit later. So when you're making a connection, the same plaque by bacteria that comes from the mouth is the same type of bacteria, same type of plaque that causes hardening of the arteries that can lead to heart attack or stroke or blood vessel blockage. You can certainly research or Google any of these that are on the list and cert put in oral health in any one of these conditions. And what will display are articles or pictures of how the inside of the mouth may look with one of these conditions. So we're not going to uh, specifically, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on a little bit of it through pictures and science and et cetera, but I do want to highlight uh, COVID-19. Everybody's talking about COVID-19, okay? You know, we're going to be talking about coronavirus for a long time, okay? Because, you know, it's, it's not going to go away anytime soon, and it always has been here, but this is, you know, a new type of, of virus or new strain. So we're having to deal with this. So dentistry, same thing. All of these listed here have some type of oral manifestation associated with them. When you Google oral health and COVID-19, you're not gonna come up with, these are the, the lesions that are associated with COVID-19. Well, the lesions that are associated with COVID-19 are the same lesions for the most part that are associated with the others that are on the list. It just depends on what else is going on systemically with that individual. Go on to the next one, please. So with the mouth body connection, uh, that may be a little difficult for you to read, but we start <laughs> right at the mouth where we, where we do our nutri nutrient intake. So 80% of American adults have gum disease, 80%. That's a lot of bad breath. That's a lot of bad teeth. That's a lot of undiagnosed dental conditions that are going on in the mouth. Okay, let's move along and travel down to the body here. So then you've got heart disease. People with gum disease are two times as likely to die from a heart attack and three times as likely to die from a stroke. Okay, so again, going back to that initial assessment, part of the dental exam. A lot of times that portion of the dental exam is skipped for, for you know, time, time or what have you. 
Okay, then poor oral hygiene can increase risk for pneumonia and respiratory infections. Excuse me, what's COVID? What, 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 is, what, what, what is COVID? So those are a combination of a lot of respiratory diseases. So again, mouth is connected to the body. Diabetes, diabetes is huge in dentistry. And you know, we'll get into that a little bit later and uh, or it, it quickly. And in rheumatoid arthritis, research has found an association between gum disease and rheumatoid arthritis. Go ahead to the next slide. So with dental diseases, there are broad category of periodontal diseases, gingivitis, or just regular garden variety inflammation of the gums, that is considered a periodontal disease. Most people think, oh, I've got periodontal disease and that's really not the best way to describe it. It's a collection of, of different diseases and they're caused by different things. So for instance, you can have um, gingivitis that's associated with uh, drugs that you take, uh, cyclosporin that is uh, used for patients who are having uh, uh, transplants, uh, uh, organ transplants. That causes uh, uh, enlargement of the gingiva. If you're epileptic and you take uh, um, dilantin, that can cause uh, enlargement of the gums. Now, are the gums unhealthy? No, it's make, plaque makes it worse, okay? Plaque always makes everything worse. So you have a group of diseases, broad term, gingivitis is one, and then periodontitis is the other. Periodontitis is when you start getting inflammation of the supporting tissues that support the teeth. And that is when you start to lose teeth. You start to lose bone and you start to get loose teeth, okay? Then dental caries, it's a fancy word for cavities, okay? So these are the two primary diseases that we deal with as dental hygienists because they are primarily caused by plaque. Always leads back to plaque. Go ahead to the next one. Pictures and science, research and science supports what we see. We can't diagnose what we can't see. So it's very important that we take x-rays or radiographs of the teeth to make sure that we are diagnosing uh, properly and also that we can you know, see what's going on underneath. Now, what you see there, the little dark areas uh, on the teeth, that's decay, that's, that's a, a cavity. So when we look in the mouth, we see dark holes where the, where the enamel has been eaten away. That little circle that you see on the root there on the, on the left, that is an abscess. You'll see uh, an abscess sometimes show up as a little pimple or a little boil on your gum tissue. Now, if those go untreated, untreated dental decay, hear me, untreated dental decay can lead to death, okay? Look up the name Diamante Driver. That young man, 12-year-old uh, from uh, Maryland, died from untreated dental decay. The picture on the right, no, that is not a picture of, 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 of his mouth, but it is a picture of what's called rampant decay. Note the destruction of the, of the enamel of the teeth, okay? It ain't pretty and it sure ain't healthy, okay? So run, walk, not run to your local, local dentist or dental hygienist so we can get some of these things taken care of. Prevention is key. Again, if you don't come, we can't find it. So don't wait until the last minute when, and that's what happens with black folk. We, again, wait to the last minute before something, before we take care of something. And it's already so far gone that, you know, we, start, we lose teeth, we lose our lives, and, and it's really unnecessary. Go to the next one. I mentioned uh, pregnancy gingivitis. On the slide on the left is pregnancy gingivitis. Now, because you're pregnant, Women, does that mean that you're gonna get gingivitis? No, it does not. You can prevent this by brushing and flossing your teeth. Honestly, you don't even really need to floss as long as you remove the plaque from in between your teeth. Flossing, everybody is not gonna embrace flossing. So there are inner dental devices or other devices that you can use, okay? The point is to, to use them. It's mechanical activity that's gonna reduce the plaque. 
not swishing, not chewing on vents. Yes, chewing does provide some breakdown of the plaque, but it's not going to get rid of it, okay? You have to brush or floss your teeth. Now, the slide on the right, that's a manifestation of HIV AIDS. So that is periodontitis that is associated with HIV AIDS. It's a very aggressive form of periodontitis. If you look at the front teeth on the bottom there, look at how the tissue is just kind of shrinking and look at how the teeth kind of look long. The, the, the area from the, there's a lot of root exposure that's going on here, okay? So it's out of our purview um, to treat patients who actually have AIDS. We can treat patients who have HIV. When full-blown AIDS, they are, we do them more harm than we do good. So they would have to go to another clinic that specializes in working with patients that have uh, full-blown AIDS. Okay, go to the next slide. This just speaks of uh, the systemic relationship with periodontal disease. And then the, the enzymes that take over, they get into the liver. The liver, uh, very detrimental because that's where we do a lot of biotransformation. Whatever we intake, uh, medications, those types of things. So if you have liver or kidney function, then your excretory system or the system that is used to eliminate toxins, and et cetera, from the body that Dominique was talking about earlier, that leads to other complications. Untreated periodontal disease can, re and can increase inflammation and lead to a, a potentially, for the, for the woman that's pregnant, um, uh, cause uh, premature uh, uh, delivery. So the, so, the, so the baby or the fetus is delivered prematurely due to the level of inflammation that is in the body. Then lastly, diabetes. Uh, Walter mentioned uh, diabetes. Um, Again, that is huge. Uh, people with diabetes have a higher chance of having periodontal gum disease. So you are at a greater risk. If you have an existing periodontal condition, you are at a greater risk for diabetes. If you have diabetes, you are at a greater risk for periodontal disease. So they all kind of connect and, and fall back on each other. Okay, so periodontal disease, pain, bad breath that doesn't go away. You can't brush it away. You can't tongue clean it away. You can't Listerine it away. It will not go away. You have to have this treated. When you click on the slide, you get a larger uh, picture of all of the things that can possibly be caused um, with uh, a person who is diabetic. Look at the, the amount of tooth loss there. Look at the, the gingival recession or the receding gum line. Um, if you have gender recession, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have uh, periodontitis or gum disease. It could mean something that you're doing too much brushing. You might be brushing too hard that's causing the gingival recession. But we ain't gonna know that until you actually come to the dentist and we can assess that. So speaking of coming to the dentist, to my last slide, we welcome you and then we invite you to help you get back on the road to better oral health. You can call... Uh, the numbers on the screen for the dental hygiene clinic, understand that they are students. We are the teaching component of this program. That's how they get their practice. So you will not get a better cleaning than you will at the, at the dental hygiene clinic because we've got instructors, they're hovering over the students and the students know what they're doing. They've been well-trained, well-educated and they get a lot of experience in the clinic, but we it's open to the public. A lot of people think that it's only uh, for some strange reason for, um, for the faculty or for the students, but it is definitely open to the public and we welcome you. We, um, we'll, we have a lot of protection protocols in place um, and, and you know, knock, on, knock on wood, knocking on my head here. Um, we already had infection control protocols in place long before COVID. So it was not that much of a stretch for us. And then the next one is the uh, community dental center where that is a more, uh, a more uh, functions like a regular dental clinic. Uh, and you can call their number if you have any uh, issues that you want to take care of. And that my friends is all I got to say about that. <laughs> 
All right, Faith, wonderful job. You know, you told it like it was and like it, I it is, and uh, really appreciate not just the information, but the knowledge uh, and also some tidbits that we didn't know about uh, and some myths that you just really blew out of the water. Thank you for that. Appreciate uh, it, thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, so Liz, let's have our final prize giveaway. Before we do that, can we uh, discuss a question for Faith? This is Mickey. Faith, yes, can you, yes. Can, can you discuss the relationship between stress and cavities? Uh, stress and cavities. Well, stress is just, you know, how you manage it is just like anything else. It just depends on um, what you put in your mouth and what you put in your body um, that will eventually start affecting your teeth. Some people are stress eaters. Some people are stress drinkers. Some people are stress uh, smokers. So all of that eventually will affect the mouth and then again, eventually affect the body. Okay. I, I know uh, my dentist, uh, I suggested one year to him that there's a relationship between stress and cavities. I was working on my dissertation. And now we know that when you're under stress, you release a chemical that actually produces cavities. So, Well, you still have to have a mechanism in place. And that's where plaque, plaque is basically uh, the vector, if you will, that uh, needs to be there, but not necessarily. Plaque makes things worse. Because like I said, you can have a completely pristine, clean mouth. And if you're on a medication, for instance, a lot of medications cause uh, dry mouth. And so dry mouth is a risk factor for the periodontal diseases and for dental decay. So you have to have that saliva and the enzymes that it produces as a buffer uh, to, to counteract or help uh, resist the decay. But again, it's still mechanical activity to remove that plaque. Plaque always makes things worse. Okay, we have one more question for, I think pronounces Shamaya wants to know, how does nail biting and cheek biting affect your overall oral health? Nail biting and cheek biting are called factitious uh, habits. Um, what you can do is just, you know, uh, you know, talk to us and see, you know, what type of things that we can put on your fingers. There's some really nasty tasting nail polish that you can apply on your, on your, on your fingernails to help you uh, prevent uh, biting. But cheek biting, that's something that we have to assess further by looking at the, the, the bite to, making, to make sure that you're not, uh, to make sure that the teeth are fitting together properly. Maybe you need orthodontics, maybe you need an appliance a uh, mouth guard or night guard or something like that to prevent you from biting your cheek. You know, maybe something's getting in the way. And then as far as nail biting, you know, I Google, Google nail biting and then it's effect on, on teeth. There are, you know, habits, people scratch their gums, people scratch their teeth, um, people, um, you know, chew on forks. You should see the damage that a toothpick can cause um, to, to teeth and over brushing mm -hmm over flossing, all of these um, habits can, can cause uh, significant damage to the teeth. Good question. Okay. Any more questions, Mickey? No, that's the thing. Uh, you wanna do the, the prize? There's one more question that is really important for all of the speakers. And, and that is what are barriers in Jackson County that uh, prevent mental health? Okay. Uh, that's, that's for all of you all. Can you come up with it? The, does Jackson County have barriers that really uh, prevent uh, mental health for its citizens? Yes, it does. Um, one thing is their lack of diversity uh, in services regarding uh, Black doctors or psychiatrists or counselors. The other thing is a lack of resources here uh, that would adequately help the community out, uh, especially the black community out with services. Okay. Sometimes it's uh, because of a lack of funding or they don't take the medical card. It's a variety of different reasons. That is one uh, thing in Jackson County that I feel needs a great improvement on. And I'm gonna mention one, I grew up with the dental hygiene clinic um, that's like a, uh, a Carbondale. There are a lot of people in the community that don't realize they can go over to the uh, dental hygiene clinic and get services. If they, I think they think that's it, one, they may not know it's there, 
And if they know it's there, they think it's only for students, but it's for people in the community too. Amen. 1365 Douglas Drive, right across the street from the now Banterra Center. I'm never going to get used to calling it that, but it's the SIU Arena. Um, for those of you that are old as I am and know that it was called that before this Banterra Center business. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, first of all, thank you to all our panelists. Uh, they have given you some awesome information, but you know what? Information is not very valuable. Uh, knowledge is potential power. It's only when you apply the knowledge will it become wisdom. And I thank you guys for that. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, our co-sponsors was Carbondale United, the Women's Center, Southern Illinois Unity Coalition, Men of Power, Women of Strength, the Carbondale Public Library, and a special thanks tonight to all our speakers and backstage volunteers. We had backstage, we had Jennifer Robinson, Liz Hartman, Mickey Weaver, and then our speakers, again, let's thank them, Nancy Maxwell, Yolanda Dean, Stephen Tarver, Dominique Miller, Walter Davis, and Faith Miller. Again, thank you all very much for joining us. Have a great night. And uh, one more thing before we take off. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for uh, uh, speaking with us and thank you to the audience for being with us. I just wanted to mention um, a thanks also to some other co-sponsors. Healing Illinois, who has uh, given out um, a variety of grants throughout the state uh, for racial healing. And, uh, and we also want to thank Chicago Trust. I also want to mention that instead of a last rolling of the dice for a prize giveaway, we will be giving a toothbrush to, uh, and again, forgive me if I have mispronounced, but uh, Sahemia Gray Cruz. Thank you so much for asking a question for Faith Miller. Um, you will receive a toothbrush as a prize for um, uh, participating with us and uh, asking a question. So thank you so much. And thank you everybody for being with us tonight and uh, get in touch with Carbondale United if you have any questions and if you need to pick up a prize. Just want to mention that's a power toothbrush so the person don't think they just getting the toothbrush. Yeah, thank yes, you, Nancy. That is a very you, Nancy, <laughs> a substantial <laughs> toothbrush, not you. This is a okay. substantial toothbrush, folks. Yes. <laughs> Liz, did you get the photo that I sent? Because then they'll have an idea. You of. know what? I actually didn't, and I apologize, but uh, we'll make sure that we can get um, Sahemia and you in touch so that they can pick up their um, power toothbrush. Okay, that's also perfect. Buy one of those, and you have uh, sufficiently put the fear in me. I will be contacting <laughs> the uh, dental clinic. All righty. Mr. Wembley, I got shirts for sale. If people want shirts that I uh, created for Motivated to Win 365, I'm wearing one right yes. now. Yes, I do think that we uh, skipped over that slide just because of time, but I do also right. just want to let the audience know that we will be making the PowerPoint available so that you can check out all the amazing resources and you can check out the shirts and you can uh, check out the detox um uh, detox products and uh, also have all of this information uh, available to you that we had presented tonight. Mr. Can I ask a question, Mr. Davis, are you at the, uh, the center in, in Marion or the center in Carbondale? Carbondale, I'm about to go up there now. <laughs> and you're there, 